Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to Leighton Junction back in the, the real room at long last. It's a, a bit belated, I have to say, a late running session and update. We've had a few computer problems and unfortunately I haven't been able to upload anything or create any videos as the system we use. Um, it had a bit of a Chernobyl moment and uh, completely packed in so we lost a load of stuff. So um, the clever nephew has managed to, um, with some new parts, build a complete new system from scratch so hopefully that should last us a good a good few years and um, so this it's a little bit late but never mind um, it's not quite the run session I had planned I had planned the Northern Bell which now will be the next one uh, once we manage to recover that as they say maybe I'll leave that to the nephew he's the, the techie block when it comes to actual PCs so in the meantime this month's session will be the TPO and the uh, carriages I got. I actually got these at Christmas last year, would you believe? But with the rebuild and one thing and another, I just this is the first outing they've had. They haven't been on the the uh, the layout up until now, so it's rather nice to get them out of the boxes. The engine itself has a house chip and uh, house sound, which is quite nice. I do have to find. I don't know if anybody else has the same, but I tend to find with the house chips they are very very noisy the volume is ridiculously high i don't know what on earth they're thinking of when they leave the factory whoever is putting the sounds on surely must think good heavens this is a bit uh, much and um unlike a lot of the other lock sound chips these the house do not have the volume control via your uh, controller so i had to hunt about and um again take lessons off the nephew and Go into CVs, I think it's CV36, and managed to lower the volume on it, and it sounds much better because, as before, it was just ridiculously loud, it overpowered just about everything, which is a bit irritating when you've got two or three running, it's just a little bit much. So, anyway, here we are with uh, the travel in the post office, which is something uh, quite close to my heart. As you know, I'm a postman, so one of the first jobs I had when I started. Uh, it wasn't, well, it, it was Royal Mail, but people didn't call it Royal Mail then. Back, I suppose, you're talking about 35 years ago. It was just called the post office. You know, if you're talking to people, asking what you do for a living, you said, oh, I work for the post office. So I started in uh, Orchard Street, which was a building behind Newcastle Central Station. And uh, we were worked in the sub-basement. And there was a big helter-skelter type shoot. And all the mail sacks come down there and do a big stage. And you put them on the various barrows. And uh, around 8 o'clock at night, we'd all troop up through a huge tunnel through the sub-basement and there was three big, huge service lifts and they went up direct into the central station itself. If anybody's familiar with the Castle Central Station from the old, those old days, you know, the mid-70s and 80s, you will recognise the big lifts at the end of each platform. I think it was platform 1 and 2, 4, 5 and 8 at the back. I may be wrong with it, some many years ago now um i'm not even sure if them lifts are still there actually and they brought you up direct to the platform itself and it was operated by a key and uh, you troop off and um you know load up the train and uh, away they would go we had, we had two there was the, uh, the northeastern tpo and the midlands which was basically the london crew and um yes Happy days. I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that job, especially being uh, you know a train fan. It, it was an ideal job. And then we've now we are Team Valley. I think we've been about nearly twenty five years now. So and as I say, the TPO is done. Unfortunately, it don't run anymore, which is uh, a bit of a shame. But um, a little brief history of the TPO is the first mail transported by train was in eighteen thirty. And it was an agreement between the general post office at the time and the Liverpool and Manchester Railways. And then in 1838, the Conveyance of Mail Act was introduced. And uh, the TPOs were born as such a good few years after. I this was the big, very early start of uh, the TPOs. And uh, as they progressed, TPOs would regularly pick up mail via a grab method with an arm out of an open door and uh, they would catch these good big leather pouches full of mail on a, on a big um, sort of big rope net um, as, as they went along the, the, uh, 
the tracks. I mean, by today's standards, health and safety, they would have kittens. They would, just wouldn't be allowed. Um, because if you go on the way of one of these things, travelling at 60, 70 miles an hour, as it whisked into the door, would have took your head off. And uh, that practice was actually ended in, uh, I think it was the 4th of October, 1971, was the last time this was used. And then, um, I think about 2003, Royal Mail decided to end the practice of actually sorting mail on trains. And uh, the following year, I think the 9th of January 2004, the very last TPO ran and ended a long tradition of sort of what we call the travelling post office. And it was more or less the same as any other post office. You know, you had men standing at pigeon fittings, sorting mail manually your little parcels and packets and it had all the fittings, had all the paraphernalia that you would have in a in a small a small office. And at the time, even when you know they finally got rid of them, it was still quite a prestigious job and it was always a little bit more highly paid. So um they're not no, no longer with us unfortunately, but they are preserved. They do have quite a few of the wagons preserved and uh, Royal Mail still still use trains but unfortunately not not as glamorous as the TPOs. So, um, that's the brief history of that. What we'll do, I'll now switch to the um, shaky cam and uh, we'll have a quick whisk down the high street and uh, show you the new street lamps in situ and then uh, we'll start this running session. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed everybody and uh, keep well and uh, we will speak soon. Bye-bye for now. Right then, hello everybody, we're back to the old favourite um, faithful shaky cam. I'll try and keep this as steady as I uh, as I can, but um, give you a little idea. You can see there how uh, we've now got both sides of the, the high street, the, the lights installed and uh, lit up. Um, nothing too fancy, I have to be honest. These um, come from, where I get these from again? With layouts for you, and I think they're about... Is it eight for ten pound? Um, and they come with the resistors already on them, which is a big help. And uh, all I do was just drill holes dropping through. I add a little bit of wire to make the droppers a bit longer. And um, I basically all I do is daisy chain them, and I put them to a AC adapter at the end with a little connection. Set it to three, four volts, and uh, job done. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and everybody has their own methods, and a lot of people will just, um, you know, plug them into a proper circuit board and all the rest of it. But it works for me, and it keeps it nice and simple. And it was, um, again, it was a tip I picked up from one of the first videos I ever watched all them years ago when I first started. And um, so I've got a bank of all these AC adapters plugged in all over the place. And uh, but you know they do the job and um, it's it works for me. And all I do is put a bit of heat shrink heat shrink around uh, the bottom of the the um, the wires. And again the same for the building lights. Pub is now lit up and uh, the police station and well petrol station little schoolhouse. And again they are just the same the drop down and um, put into. An AC adapter, and again, I think they're on there uh, five, three to four, five volts. I like the AC adapters simply because you can uh, you can alter the voltage. You don't have to have a resistor if you don't want to, and you can vary it from three volts right up to twelve. So uh, it works out quite well. So anyway, that's the high street now lit. I've got the interior buildings to do, but I'll do that in a few weeks' time. I think. Uh, I deserve a rest, to be honest, at the moment. I've had enough of uh, fiddling about. So anyway, that's the uh, the high street done, and uh, we'll get on with the running session. So uh, hope you enjoy that, everybody, and um, we'll uh, we'll crack on. So bye bye for now.